You'll never feel better about your sisters of battle getting shot off the table than if they're dying in glorious self-sacrifice with the order of our martyred lady. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where today we're taking a look at the mini codex supplement that came out in the Warzone Charadon Book of Fire, with a bunch of new rules for the Order of Armated Lady, perhaps the most prominent of the Sisters of Battle Orders. In the lore, these girls are the followers of Saint Catherine, and perhaps their most notable feature in the background is that they're very willing to follow their fallen saint into martyrdom, and pretty much every single rule in this codex supplement somehow makes them better when their sisters either are injured or die. I thought we'd start off with a very quick refresh on what the Order of Armata Lady does from the core codex, then move on to the new options for unique warlord traits, relics and stratagems, which you can use if you have a detachment of this order. So prior to the supplement, I would have said that the Order of Armata Lady is kind of medium to strong, has a fair few reasonable benefits, but maybe not just lending itself enormously to any one given strategy, say like Bloody Rose with melee, or Argent Shroud with shooting. The Conviction gives you a miracle dice each phase that one of the units died in, and you get plus one to hit for any squad that's taken casualties though not been wiped out, kind of lends itself to playing with fairly small units of infantry perhaps. Otherwise they've got a Warlord trait that gives them minus one damage, and some miracle dice shenanigans for the Warlord. A fun Inferno pistol with 12 inch range and damage d6 plus 3 all the time, and really quite a handy stratagem where if your opponent kills one of your characters, then if you choose to spend one command point, then all your units get plus 1 to wound against that unit for the rest of the game. That could be a really serious damage boost if they do kill one of your characters with quite an important unit of theirs. Finally, they've got Junith Arita, an 130 point cannoness that can give one unit 4 rerolls to hit. She packs her own days with heavy flamers and her shield projectors can put one unit in cover nearby. She seems like a fairly reasonable alternative to a cannoness if you do have a unit that's worth buffing with those rerolls. Overall though, I'd say the biggest and easiest draws are the miracle dice, plus that stratagem opportunistically. So let's get on to the new stuff from the Book of Fire then. First up, there's three new warlord traits, Saintly Example, Saint Catherine's Legacy, and Martyr's Strength. Saintly Example is perhaps a bit of a strange one, you roll a random d6 on the Adeptus Sororitas Warlord traits for your Warlord, and then if the model is destroyed at any point in the game, you then get to choose a different Warlord trait for a different model. So say if your Canadess gets killed, maybe the Palatine could step up to be your new Warlord, and you get to choose which trait she gets in-game. That model then becomes your Warlord for all mission and rules purposes, such as if the enemy has slayed the Warlord, for example. I guess it could potentially be worse for a frontline Canadess, it could give you a bit of flexibility for which trait you jump into in-game, provided the Canoness does actually get killed. But to be honest, I think I'd much rather just have a Warlord trait of my choice right from the start, rather than having to bear with a random one until the opponent is kind enough to kill your model. The next one is St. Catherine's Legacy. This one's a 6-inch aura, and it acts as a small boost to the Spirit of the Martyr Sacred Rite, the one that usually gives enemy units a mortal wound on a 6 when they kill one of your models. It still only works in melee, and to be honest I'm still not super enthused about this. It means that you have to pick that sacred right, and I think it's really going to be worth it compared with having the exploding sixes on the charge, or maybe the anti-psychic buff if it was against a relevant army. I guess it could potentially make the core of your army a fair bit more resistant to enemy melee troops, but even say if you lose an entire unit of battle sisters in melee right next to this warlord, it's still only going to be averaging around about 3 mortal wounds on the enemy. It's just not really quite enough to justify it, in my opinion. Finally, we come to Martyr's Strength, which I'm afraid I didn't write out completely on this slide, apologies for that. You basically get plus one strength and plus one attack for each wound that you've lost, up to a maximum of two of each. So say if your Canoness had taken two wounds, she'd be up to a base strength five and a base six attacks. Normally I'd say that this is pretty bad, but it can work quite well with the Blade of Sacrifice, one of the unique relics that we'll take a look at now. So the Blade of Sacrifice basically is a power sword, and it gives you an interesting ability where you can have your model take one or two wounds at the start of the fight phase, and then if you get a successful wound roll against the enemy, then instead of doing any normal damage, the enemy either takes one or two mortal wounds, depending on how many wounds that you sacrificed at the start of the fight. Now again, on its own, I'd say that it's potentially quite bad. I guess a kind of nifty trick of ignoring invuls if you happen to be against a character with some nice protective ones. 
but a bit rubbish that you have to sacrifice wounds to get there, particularly when your cannoness only has 5. But if you had it in combo with that warlord trait, you could sacrifice 2 wounds, then suddenly your warlords all the way up to strength 6 and 6 attacks, and every time that you make a successful wound roll, it'll deal out 2 mortal wounds. Seems like it could be quite worth it to me. Potentially against standard space marines, that could be 6 mortal wounds the first time you fight. It's not a bad little combo, but I would weigh it up against things like the Blade of St. Eleanor, that's the one that's strength 5, AP-3 and flat 3 damage, which is going to be equally strong against quite a few targets, without having to consume a warlord trait or injure your cannoness. Otherwise, we have the Helm of the Fiery Heart, that's a once per game 2 plus invul save for one phase, though if you do fail any saves then you can't re-roll them. I guess it's good for some near guaranteed protection temporarily, but after that it basically has no effect whatsoever, so I'm not really sure it's worth it as a relic. The Scepter of Vengeance, which is a relic Dogmata stave, it puts her up to strength 6, AP-2 and damage 2, with plus 1 to wound against Tyranids. She's not bad in melee, though she's not exactly a powerhouse either, I think that's barely worth it even if you know you're fighting Tyranids. Then finally a relic called the Candela Scroll, that's for the Imagifier, and that's a once per game aura of plus one attack to any core or character units within six inches. I guess could be fun in combination with the Tale of the Warrior to give you plus one strength as well. I suppose that could potentially be fun combined with some Sacrosants or a Pincher or something. Overall though, I wouldn't say that the Warlord traits or the Relics are incredibly standout. I don't think they compete amazingly well against the Codex ones, with maybe the small exception being of combining the Blade of Sacrifice with the Martyr Strength Warlord trait to have both their effects in play. Near guaranteeing a bunch of mortal wounds through could be a good way to deal a ton of damage to some very durable units. Finally, we come to the Stratagems, which really do emphasise the Armata Ladies Sisters dying for the cause in all manner of fun and creative ways. First up, we have Vengeance for Armageddon, where I believe that the Sisters held Hive Tempestora against the Greenskins, and for one command point, they can remember how to fight Orcs better getting full re-rolls to hit in the fight phase. That works on any unit, whether it's a core character or vehicle model. Could be handy on the Warsuits or Zephyrin perhaps. Next we have Zealous Death Wish for 1 CP, a plus 1 to hit in melee if the enemy unit has at least 5 more models than the unit attacking them, so a bit of a bonus against hordes, though I guess this will be kind of redundant on any models that already have the Armata Lady buff in play, and their squads lost at least one casualty. Maybe could be handy on Repenture, I guess, to help get around that minus one to hit. Next we have Pious Machine Spirit, one command point to allow a vehicle to fight on its top bracket this turn. Potentially useful if, say, you have something like a Castigator or an Exorcist, and it's down to bottom bracket. For two command points, we have Rejoice the Fallen, which I think is perhaps my favourite out of any of these stratagems, as it could really make your opponent have to think quite hard about their shooting phase. You use this at the end of your opponent's shooting phase, and you can use it on any unit that was at greater than half strength before the enemy shot things, and now is less than half strength after. That unit that's been depleted by enemy fire can now immediately shoot as if it were your shooting phase. I could potentially see this coming in handy on something like lone melter guns or multi-melters in a squad. Maybe the vast majority of their squad has just been gutted, but then you could have a potentially really quite powerful strike back, Ideally, maybe shooting something that was just about to charge in the enemy charge phase. Might be very satisfying to have a pop at frying a character or something. Maybe something that's only exposed, because your opponent wouldn't expect you to be shooting him in their own shooting phase. Certainly could be a fun one, one to look out for if you have the opportunity to use it. Next we have Martyr's Pyre, which is a flamer one, and it's a way to fire flamers in close combat. You get to fire any flame weapons as if they're pistol weapons and then after you've shot with them, you roll a dice for each model that's fired a flame weapon, and on the roll of a 1, they can fire that flame weapon once more, but then they will die, just basically going out with one last blaze of flames. I guess that could be kind of handy in the right circumstances, but I would remember that sisters do have a fall back and shoot stratagem, and that might often be the better option, unless you're using this on a unit that really wants to remain in combat, and still be able to strike the enemy. Next up we have Death Before Disgrace, 1 command point, and you use this at the start of your movement phase, sorry, not at the end, as I've written on the slide. Until the start of your next movement phase, that unit can't fall back, but if it doesn't have it, then it gains the obsec special rule, and if it already had obsec, then each model counts as two models for the purposes of securing objectives. I think this is really quite a powerful one to have in play. 
as it means that if it ever makes the difference as to whether or not you flip an objective, you can have any unit suddenly become obsec, and if it isn't going to make any difference, then you don't have to bother using it. This is honestly just a nice flat buff to the Armated Lady faction, meaning that every so often you might just be able to spend some command points to allow you to get more victory points. Next up we come to Armata's Duty for 1 CP, where you select an Armata Lady core unit that's the target of an attack, and for the rest of the phase, every time a model is destroyed you roll a dice, on a 4+, plus, you get to shoot with one weapon as if it were the shooting phase, or make a single attack as if it were the fight phase. Maybe it could be handy on a big battle sister unit, one that is just about to receive a lot of enemy shooting attention, or even just something like a pop-up unit of retributors, maybe they've jumped up, fired their weapons and killed something, and now are about to get wiped out in return. Again, it's another quite powerful option for shooting in the opponent's turn, and potentially if you manage to shoot something that was just about to shoot itself, then you could both kill something and also deny your opponent firepower. I think you'd have to pick your targets carefully for this one, but if the stars align and you get some accurate multi-melter shots off in the opponent's shooting phase, it could actually be really powerful. Finally, for 1 CP, we have Exemplar of the Order. This basically allows you to take one extra Warlord trait for your main Warlord, provided it's one of the three Warlord traits from this new Armata Lady table. I think maybe the best use of it might be to use that Martyr Strength combo, and perhaps put it with something like Righteous Rage. That could be a Cannon S that could do a turn of some extreme devastation. So overall, I think that this will add a fair bit of strength to the Order of Armata Lady, the main boost to them coming from all of those interesting stratagems, particularly the Obsec one and the ones that allow shooting in the opponent's shooting phase seem like quite good options. I'm still not totally convinced that everyone will start flock to using them as opposed to Bloody Rose or Argent Shroud or something, but they do now look like an order that has quite a lot going on, and seem a really solid choice for a more mixed sisters army that isn't just going say pure melee or pure shooting. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say down in the comments, Please let me know your thoughts or if I've made any errors in the video. If you've enjoyed, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly be aiming to release a fair few more Sisters videos in the next few weeks. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos quite a bit, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.